Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at the settings for the Path Tracer in Twinmotion 2025. We're going to look at trying to find out what the optimum Path Tracer settings are to get the best result on the least amount of time. We'll look at a number of different render settings that basically different values and try and find what's the sweet spot between basically amount of samples, bounces, and the time for your actual renders. Hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of what settings you should use to get the best render in the fastest amount of time. All right, go ahead and get into it. So here we are in Toonmotion 2025.1.1. This is the scene that we're going to use. You can see a couple of features here. I've had Lumen turned on right now just so I can work in real time and you can see what I'm talking about. This room is a pretty standard kind of generic room. There's nothing special architecturally going on in there. We do have a number of different interesting surfaces that I do want to emphasize. We have a large mirror on the left side and we'll be looking at the reflections that we get in that mirror. We have a number of concrete, marble, and we also have a number of glass objects that we can take a look at. The floor also features a about a 25% roughness tile. And we've also got some areas here where we'll be able to compare the shadows in our various results. We do also feature foliage. And this is something that we'll actually want to look at later on, is how well does the path tracer capture this footage in, from basically very low settings all the way up to very high. We've got some other objects here with what I would consider low roughness, high specularity, including this really lovely Baz model here. And we do have windows. This is set to a very basic glass material. It's just clear glass, standard, nothing special about that, and a little bit of foliage outside. Now, in order to keep our lighting system consistent, I'll move myself out of the way. How we've set this up is quite simple. We have turned off everything else Nothing on here, no special effects, no nothing, just the HDRI, and we're using what is effectively this completely white HDRI. So it's actually one I found on a website for jewelry. All it is is a perfectly white HDRI, no other color variations in it. And then we have this kind of pronounced white area right here. That's it. That's the closest thing to kind of a spotlight within this scene. So what we have is our scene with multiple materials, sort of different areas of texture, roughness, shininess, reflectivity, specularity. We've got some foliage and we've no real other lights going on outside. So all we have is just this scene. This way we'll be able to keep our results consistent across all the different sample and bounce counts. And we will also be able to give you kind of a good idea of how, like kind of where that sweet spot actually is. So you can see here, these are the finished renders. Please note, we rendered all of these shots in 8K, except for two at the end that were in 4K that we'll talk about later. But I wanted everything to be at the highest resolution. The denoiser is on. I don't really know why you'd work with that off, but that's a topic for a separate video. 8K, all of these images have numbers attached to them. So for example, the one on the top left here is image number one, but it's more specifically, it's 16 samples per pixel and eight bounces. Going all the way up to the highest quality rendered image that I could do before my computer exploded, which in Twinmotion 2025 is quite a high chance of it happening. So this is over a thousand samples per pixel at 10 bounces. And we'll look at the highest quality in a second. But first, let's look at the low quality to see, because really we want to find there is a sweet spot right in the middle between the number of samples, the results you get, and the time it actually takes, or, and then the hardware kind of required. So it kind of forms like this kind of triangle pyramid. Is that not redundant, triangle pyramid? Probably. I've had a lot of coffee. Okay, so the first one, 8K image, are what I think is really nice. I really like this scene. It was quick to make, and I just, I like the look of this scene. So this is 16 samples and eight bounces. So this is very, very low indeed. You can see here the mirror, the substantial warbling. This is true across all of the images that we do, but that's pretty warbly. It's almost like a Lumion render. The walls are incredibly splotchy, very, very, very splotchy. The other materials, for example, these objects over here look okay, 
By the way, you can actually see there's a leftover piece of the SketchUp model right here, but whatever. The reflections on the glass, again, very splotchy, very poor quality. And the shadows also just look kind of meh. So to me, this is, you know, arguably I'd say it's still better than a than the Illumin render, but it's it's not very great at all. Foliage and the specularity over here. You can see this glass does look okay. This vase has got that nice specularity. It's reading quite well. And the foliage is all pretty good, particularly the areas of occlusion. The biggest issue is sort of the bad shadows and the splotchy or splotchy walls. Let's look here at 32. So image on the left, 16, eight bounces. That's the first one. Image on the right, 32. I'm toggling between them. There's almost no discernible difference here between these two values. 16 samples per pixel, eight bounces. 32 samples per pixels, eight bounces. Absolutely the same low-wish quality render that you're going to get. Now, if we go up to 64, which is the medium, I believe, settings for default uh, Twin Motion Clock Tracer, 64 samples per pixels. The kind of the thing that's really going to stand out is how less splotchy the shadows, and this is just a matte white wall. It's just a default matte material. It's my favorite Twin Motion bog standard plain material, matte white wall. You can see there is still going to be a little bit of Splotchy is the best word I can really use for it. A bit of kind of issues where the lines aren't perfectly straight. The reflections still look good. The materials over here look really fine. You can tell exactly what they are. The marble is good. The statue looks really, really nice. And any imperfections here on the statue, this actually is just the way the model came in. The shadows in and around the objects where you would get kind of what we consider sort of ambient occlusion. Yeah, I think these do start to look a lot better. The glass is still kind of meh over here and the foliage is still looking pretty nice. This is dense two-sided foliage from Max Tree, high resolution model. Overall image 64, so again 64 samples per pixel and eight bounces is pretty good. Let's look at where we get into the really high levels here. I want to show you this really quickly. So the first one is 256. So now this is Lumen, or sorry, this was the Path Tracer high setting, the default high within Twin Motion, and has been the default high since I think for the last two or three years now, if memory serves. About 250 or 256 samples and 10 bounces. And this looks really, really nice. You're getting, I mean, you're getting much better sort of reflections within the glass, but this was just a standard glass material applied to a two-sided object, so it's never going to be amazing. But the table looks good. These shadows do look really, really nice. The glass over here looks really lovely. I have no, absolutely no issues with this. And you can see the warble effect on the mirror. Yeah, it, it's still not perfect, but it's, yeah, I think, and look at that, the wall is looking perfectly fine now you can't tell really any sort of issues here like this little spot right here i think that's more due to sketch up more than anything i don't think that's an issue with the path tracer the foliage looks good and even these fine reflections you can see look how beautiful that looks that's absolutely lovely that's really really nice this is sweet this is super sweet now let's look here really quickly at this is the next one on the right is 256 but i've doubled the number of bounces and you might be thinking there's no real difference that you can actually kind of see here 256 10 bounces 256 with 20 bounces there isn't bounces are probably going to make a much bigger difference at least from my very limited understanding of ray tracing and path tracing math really in dimly lit environments or environments where really you only have like one light source, maybe like a bathroom, that's when you may want to crank up the bounces. And again, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't have a programmer's or engineer's knowledge of this stuff. I'm merely looking at the results and giving you my thoughts on them. 256 or 250, whatever you want to call it, the path tracing high at 10 bounces is a beautiful render. 20 bounces doesn't really change anything. Okay, you might be thinking, but what if we, what if we just, I, I want to crank it. I want to go old school, like, you know, when the Path Tracer was first introduced and the high setting was actually 500 samples per pixel at 8K. 
there's like no difference. Like really, I'm not in an 8K image. I'm not really picking up any discernible difference here. Uh, let's maybe look at this glass here. Let's do this. We'll zoom out. And I'm just focusing on the glass on the table. And sure, I know you're going to say there's no caustics, there's no, there's, you know, light rays or whatever. There's no all the fancy lighting stuff. But right now, the difference between a 250 samples per pixel and a 500 plus is non-existent. And so the last one I want to look at here really is over a thousand samples per pixel with 10 bounces. And look how good it is. I'm looking at the wall here. So here's our 250. Over a thousand samples, 10 bounces. If you look at the roof in particular, this area right up here, there is a slight, slight improvement. A thousand gives you a tighter result. It's sharper, a little bit, a little bit sharper. But in one part of the image, there's no real difference in the glass. And even just look at these glass lights back here and look at that. It's the same across from a thousand all the way to 256, 510 or 512. Now, to me, I, I know there are a lot of variables and every scene you might argue is a little bit different. However, the time it took to render this 8K image at a thousand samples was really, really long on a 4070 Ti Super, which I think is about a 12 gig uh, GPU. So it was sort of a higher end of the range, you know, the last generation. Still a good GPU. I still really like it, but that time was substantial and i don't see anything in the end result that actually says this is the settings you need to use honestly as it currently stands what i would say is in an 8k image for an interior shot like this if you're not getting a decent result with about 250 what basically twin motion says is the high setting I don't see any reason to go beyond that. Now, you could argue if there's a lot more glass in the scene, if there's a lot more reflections. But look at this. Look at these reflections on the ground here. Here we are at a thousand. Just looking in around this bottom chair. 250, 250, 512. There's not a massive difference. Last thing I want to mention on this is should he render at 8K or 4K? So you can see up on the top here, I've got two different shots here. Uh, this one is 512, uh, so, you know, uh, 500 samples, 10 bounces. And it's in, if we look at the bottom left, it's an 8K image. And just to the left of it, I've got an image again, 512, 10, but 4K. So I want to move myself out of the way a little bit here. So toggling between the 8K and the 4K, 8K, 4K. So really where you're going to get a lot of benefit here is going to be, if we look at the foliage on the bottom right here. So this is the 8K foliage. And really you're looking at in and around these areas here. So 8K. And if we drop down to the 4K, you can see. So you do get a lot more fidelity. Now, obviously the render times are going to be severe. And in this case, I don't know that I'm seeing a massive difference. My preference, my personal preference, for example, if we look here on that vase, you do see it a little bit. Personal preference would be just always render an AK. It takes a bit longer. It's a bit more resource intensive. You could go take a, your dog for a walk and make a cup of coffee. It's that much longer than it's going to be. But generally speaking, I'd rather have those pixels to work with in Photoshop, even if you end up downsizing. Or if you've watched some of the other videos recently, we've rendered an 8K, resized the duplicate in Photoshop, did AI magic on the smaller sort of duplicate, and then brought that back into Photoshop. So resize the small one back to 8K, and then kind of merge the two pictures to give you the best of both worlds. But as it currently stands for me, in this interior shot, and I understand an exterior, people might say the results will be different. But in this interior shot right now, the sweet spot, honestly, seems to be just setting it to the default high 
and rendering it at 8K. Everything after that seems to be a case of diminishing returns. And as much as I do love the look of this super fine looking 1000 samples with 10 bounces, this is just, you know, oh wow, everything is so crisp and clean. It almost looks like a D5 render. It's that, that's like really sharpness. I don't know that this was worth, I can't, I can't remember how long this was, but this was a long time rendering. So yeah, it's not actually worth it. So if you're not getting a good result at the default high settings, then maybe it's some other issue. It's not a question of just ramping up the samples to get a better result. Maybe the camera is bad, maybe the materials are bad, or the overall lighting is just sort of rubbish. These are all the other things that you have to be mindful of. But all in all, uh, when in doubt, set it to high, render in 8K, might take about 15 minutes. Although I will, one more caveat on this one thing I want to mention, 2025's path tracing rendering is so slow. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what was changed. I, I have no explanation for it. But at the moment, as it currently stands uh, in June going into July in 2025, if you have projects to work on, real projects to work on right now, don't use 2025. Use 2024, the most stable release. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just something is not right under the hood at the moment. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully this will help you going forward. And hopefully this will save you from having to do your own sort of A-B testing just to see what settings you should use. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.